we finally have the most leaked smartphone in the history of Google. Now I've got to say that they've done well making this phone such hype. I'm Jens Garcia from Tech for Geeks, and this is our unboxing and overview of this, the Google Nexus 5. <laughs> Now the one we got here is the 32 gigabyte model which retails for 449 Australian dollars or if you live in the US it will cost you 399. Now you can get this in 16 gigabyte model as well if you're on a slightly low budget but either way you are going to get the same performance just with different storage. There's basically no surprise with the packaging we've seen leaks before it even went on sale or should I say before it was official. Now this is the white Nexus 5 and the difference between the packaging of this compared to the black model is that you don't get the white Nexus 5 image at the front of the box but apart from that everything else is the same. Now let's quickly cut the seals, remove the lid and I did have trouble removing it by the way so uh, that's just to something that I should tell you I guess. Now there's the brand new Nexus 5 when you open it and straight away you'll notice the bigger 5 inch True HD IPS display. Now there's nothing fancy underneath the phone to reduce the cost but in there we have got the literature, a USB wall charger, and a micro USB cable, and no earphones as well. And here is the phone itself and I have to say that it feels very light. Now we'll take a look at it closely but before we do let's just remove all the stickers first. Now while the phone is booting up, let me give you a tour of the internal and external hardware. Now powering the Nexus 5 is a quad-core Snapdragon 800 processor, clocked in at 2.3GHz and Adreno 330 GPU, accompanied by 2GB of RAM, so really great specs there for such a low price. Now at the front you have your Full HD 1080p display with 445 ppi, you have the 1.3 megapixel front facing camera and then next to that is the white earpiece so that's how you'll know that this is a white nexus 5. These also have three software buttons and below that is actually the notification light which you obviously won't be able to see. On the sides you'll find the power and lock button on the right hand side of the phone and then next to that you will also find the micro sim card slot. On the left hand side of the phone there is only one large button which would be the volume rocker. At the top you will find the 3.5mm headphone jack along with the microphone and then on the bottom of the phone you will find the speaker grills which do look similar to the G2 and then in the middle you will find the micro USB port so no secondary microphone at all. And then on the back you will see that giant 8 megapixel camera with an LED flash, Nexus logo in the middle and you have the LG logo as well because they manufactured this phone. And by the way, that gray accent on the Nexus logo looks awesome in my opinion. Now when you first boot it up the phone, there will be an update. It's 130 megabytes big and you won't be able to use the phone until you update it. So we'll have to skip that part and bring you to the actual home screen. I guess what's special about this is the latest version of Android operating system which is 4.4 or you can call it KitKat if you want. Now the operating system is meant to run better on low-end devices with at least 512 megabytes of RAM and hardware optimization is something that was missing from it so it's great to finally see that on Android. Now visually it's not an overhaul update but it certainly looks a lot more flat. Now let's take a look at the lock screen first. What's new on the home screen is the addition of quick camera access button. You will have to hold it and then slide to the left to access. And you'll notice that the arrow up button as well is there. Now that button is for Google now. Hold the button and slide up to access it. Now going to the app drawer, you'll notice the icons are a little bigger as well. And if you look at the top, there used to be an app and widget tabs in there, but now they're gone. And that is because you'll have to hold the page on the home screen and then change the widget from there. Now you also have your settings in there and also the wallpapers. So that's just a little tweak but it really does make Android 4.4 a lot more organized. So what else is new? Now kind of similar concept to the Moto X where Google Now 
is enabled right on your home screen just by saying okay google and that will automatically launch the application for you now you can set your alarm do your calls and text uh, from there and also search something from the web so i thought that was really cool but you don't get the same feature like on the moto x now speaking of google now you also get a dedicated page for it which you can disable as well by the way if you don't want it i guess what google is trying to do is for us to use a lot more of their applications rather than the others unfortunately that's all i can show you but don't worry we will be covering a lot of videos on this over the next few days and weeks and including the comparison with this and the note 3 but for now if you enjoyed this video then please make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out any of our future videos you can also follow us on your favorite social media sites. All the links will be in the description box below. As always, I'm Zinskarsia from Tech for Geeks, and I'll see you all in the next one.